Second Samuel chapter 16 verse 2 What is this for? The king asked Ziba. And Ziba replied, The donkeys are for you people to ride on. And the bread and the summer fruit are the youngest man to eat. The wine is to be taken with you into the wilderness for those who become faint. And where is this movie boss at? The king asked him. He stayed in Jerusalem. Ziba replied. He said, Today I will get back the kingdom of my grandfather Saul. In that case, the king told Ziba, I give you everything will be bosses on. Thank you, sir. Ziba replied, I will always do whatever you want me to do. Simei cursed David. As David and his party passed Pahurim, a man came out of the village cursing them. It was Simei, son of the Gera, a member of the Saul's family. He threw stones at the king and the king's officers and all the mighty warriors who surrounded them. Get out of here, you murderer, you scoundrel! He shouted at David, the road is paying you back for murdering Saul and his family. You stole his stone, and now the road gate giving it to your son Absalom. Unless you would taste some of your own medicine, your murderer. Why should this dead dog curse my road to king? Abiseth, son of the Jerua, demanded, Let me go over and cut off his head. No, the king said, What am I going to do with your son of Jerua? If you road has told me to curse me, who am I to stop him? Then David said to the Abiseth and the other officer, My own son is trying to kill me. Shouldn't this relative of Saul's have been even more reason to do so? Leave him alone and let him curse, for the road has told him to do it. And perhaps the road will see that I am being wronged and will bless me because of this. Curses. So David and his men continued on, and Simei kept pace with them on nearby hillside, cursing as he went, throwing stones at David and tossing dust into the air. The king and all who were with his grew weary along the way, so they lasted when they reached the Jordan River. I know where advised Absalom. Meanwhile, Absalom and his men arrived in Jerusalem, accompanied by Ahidobel. When David's friends at Hushai the archite arrived, he went immediately to see Absalom. Long live the king, he exclaimed. Long live the king. Is this the way you treat your friend David? Absalom asked him. Why aren't you with him? I'm here because I work for the man who is chosen by the road by, and by Israel, who shy replied. And anyway, why shouldn't I serve you? I have your father and now will help you. Absalom turned to Ahinodab and asked him, What should I do next? Ahinodab told him, Go and sleep with your father's concubine, for he has left them here to keep the house, then all Israel will know that you have inserted him beyond hope of reconciliations, and they will give you their support. So they set up a tent to palace roof where everyone could see it, and Absalom went into the tent to the sleep with his father's concubines. Absalom followed Ahinobar's advice just as David had done. For every word Ahinobar spoke seems as wise as though it had come directly from the mouth of God. Now Ahinobar urged Absalom, Let me choose to have those men to start out after David tonight. I will catch up to him when he is weary and discouraged. He and his troops were in panic and discouraged 
everyone will run away and then our only the king and I will bring all the people back to you as bride return to her husband. After all, this is only this man's life that you seek. Then all the people will remain unharmed and peaceful. This plan seems good to Absalom and to all the other leaders of Israel.